it's Sherry from A Quilting Life. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the Courthouse Steps block. And actually my book Sunday Best Quilts, co-authored with Corey Yoder, has two Courthouse Steps quilt block quilts in it. So I thought this would be a great video to show you a little bit about the blocks and how you can make them easily and accurately. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. And now let's get started with the courthouse steps block. Okay, so I've got all of the pieces laid out here for a courthouse steps block. And you might be looking at the pieces and thinking that this looks a little bit similar to the log cabin block. And if you've seen, I have two other videos on the log cabin block. But the courthouse steps is a little bit different because instead of sewing the pieces around in a circle, you sew two pieces on one side, press, two pieces on another side, press, pieces on the other side, press, pieces on this side. And so you're not moving in, in a clockwise motion like you are with the log cabin block, but you're, you're sewing things together in pairs that are on opposite sides of your center. So I've got this block laid out, and then I've got another block where you can see the first step. Um, and so what I've done is I've sewed the two matching sides together to my center square, and I pressed them out, and then I sewed the next two pieces to make my center unit. And you can see, just as before, I have the rest of the pieces all laid out. Um, but this is, this is how you sew them together, two across from each other, two across from each other. This will be our next step, is to show these two. One other thing I want to mention right now is that the Log Cabin Trim Tool Ruler that I also talked about in my Log Cabin videos can also be used for the courthouse steps block. If you notice, um, you can see the little courthouse steps diagram, and it actually functions the same way. If you watch that other video, um, you're gonna see that you trim three different times, and with the courthouse steps block, you can use this same ruler to have perfectly square courthouse steps blocks, and you're gonna trim in the same method. Now I'm going to show you the next step, which is, um, I've got two layers sewn together now. So I did my center square and my first little unit, and then I sewed two more and two more. And with the courthouse steps block, you can make it all scrappy but you can create a lot of different patterns by doing all of your lights um, in one direction and all of your darks in another direction. And you can get these little patterns going and you can turn the blocks and create fun patterns in your quilt. Okay, I've got another. Um, you can see from here to here, it's just the last round being sewn on. And so, um, and you can kind of see what I was talking about where you could turn your blocks opposite directions. Um, one more thing that I wanted to show you about this block is that there are lots of variations. It's really just a technique of sewing on either side and then top and bottom. So on either side and top and bottom, either side, top and bottom. And you just keep continuing around to make the block. <clears throat> now this block and this block are both blocks from the Sunday Best Quilts book that I showed you earlier. And so you can see that there are two really fun variations on the same block. You can make them without the ruler. The directions are provided in our book for making the blocks with no specialty ruler, but if you wanna make sure that you're super accurate, you can use the ruler, cut the pieces a little bit bigger, and trim them down. 
So I hope you enjoyed our little discussion today about courthouse steps blocks. There are two quilts in my Sunday Best Quilts book that use those courthouse steps blocks. The two different blocks that I showed you, the small one that we worked on step by step, and also the larger one with a little bit different proportion and scale. If you want to make these two quilts, you can find all the directions, fabric requirements, cutting information in the book, and I'll link to that in the description below. I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. I appreciate it so much, and thanks for stopping by.